Hey folks, uh, I want to teach you how to make a very simple rig. We're going to use uh, the number four circle hook, the tangerine line. Uh, we're going to start by attaching the bank sinker. Uh, this is, uh, uh, it's important that you have a really good nut in there <clears throat> because uh, you, if you swing this around and it comes off, it could be, uh, it could be quite a problem. So uh, I'm going to do a uni nut. I'm going to give it nine turns. Um, I like to do uh, eight to nine turns on the, on the tangerine, tangerine line. Uh, it's going to look like that, and I'm going to pull, uh, but I'm, gonna pull, I'm not going to pull too tightly. I want to distort the line, uh, and I want to make sure it slides when I pull on the long end. Uh, I'm going to adjust it uh, nice and tight, and uh, I'm going to cut off the excess. I'd like to leave about a quarter of an inch at uh, the very end. I like to cut it all the way to the nut. Uh, I think it's a little bit safer that way. And I'm going to mark about 12 to 18 inches. Here I'm doing about 12 inches. And then I'm going to pull another 8 inches, uh, a loop about 8 inches, eight inches long. And I'm going to proceed to give it a, a knot, which is uh, basically like a surgeon's knot. Uh, I'm going to give it uh, 5 turns. Uh, this is uh, works quite well for the setup. Uh, uh, then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull it, uh, even though you don't see me using uh, lubricating the nuts here, but I do like to lubricate the nuts. Uh, it does make a little bit of a difference, it makes them a little bit stronger, and it minimizes the stretch on the line. I'm going to mark another spot about 12 inches above that one, and uh, repeat the whole process again. Now you could use uh, a dropper loop, uh, and it would be actually a little bit stronger. I prefer to use this uh, loop, uh, this nut this way, uh, because it's a lot easier to do and I can do it in complete darkness. I don't actually have to see uh, to to do this. Uh, even even set up the hook. Um, and I can do it by feel basically. Uh, so now we're going to take the end of that loop that we created for the hook and we're going to pinch the end uh, really tightly and we're going to push it through the eye of the hook. Um, once you, uh, you know, have practice doing this you'll find that you can actually do this by touch. You don't actually have to look at it. Uh, you can pretty much train yourself to do it by touch, which is very useful when you fish at night. I fish at night uh, very, very often. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, except for the middle of winter when it's cold, uh, all my fishing is at night. So uh, here we're going to make a Palomar uh, knot with two uh, turns. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to push that hook through the loop, as you see here. Uh, and notice that I use my finger in the, in the middle, in the little gap. Uh, and and uh, I, you know, adjust that knot uh, before I pull and make the final adjustment. Um, so it's, uh, there it is, nice and tight. Uh, that's your first, uh, first hook for the setup. And um, now we're going to go ahead and make the second one. Now, one advantage of having, uh, um, you know, doing this and where you actually have, in essence, two leaders going out, is that if the fish breaks one, even, you know, uh, you have a second one. Um, now, um, this is uh, pretty much a, a, a setup for bottom fishing. So, you know, your snappers, your grunts, your pig fish, um, but I've ca I've caught you know I've caught all sorts of stuff with it. I've caught uh, flounder and uh, even used it in freshwater. Um, so it's uh, you know it also another advantage is that having the weight on the bottom allows you to cast farther away. Uh, it's excellent for casting. Uh, typically, when I go to a new place, the first thing I do is uh, set uh, one or two lines this way. Very small piece of bait, uh, typically squid. Um, and, uh, and from there I catch, uh, fish that I use for bait for bigger things, you know, um, good sized grunt, uh, or big pinfish, free line that, and, you know, you can go for snook or something else bigger. So now I'm going to show you how to, uh, um, uh, put this away in a safe way. So once your, uh, your Yito is rigged and you have hooks on it, you want to make sure you don't poke yourself or, you know, get them stuck somewhere. So I put my thumb on the line, as you see, and I fold it back, creating another loop, put the hook on that loop, making sure that uh, the slanted, because these are offset hooks, so the point of the hook is going right into uh, the line. 
uh, and that makes it very safe. There's nothing that sticks out. Uh, it's pretty secure on the reel. I'm going to do the same thing for the second hook. Mm, and, uh, you know, notice that I have my finger in the middle. And that allows me to adjust it a little bit if it's too short. Like in this case, it's a little bit too short, so I'm going to pull back a little bit. Um, okay, pull back a little bit. And uh, go ahead and try again. Again, the, the hook through the big loop, and then you pull back. Uh, adjusting and making it nice and tight, making sure the tip is in the line itself. It's a very safe setup, uh, very simple, uh, and I've been, you know, very, very successful with it. Uh, so, folks, thank you very much. Uh, please check out the rest of the videos.